Morning, everybody. How are you today? Hi, Anne. Hi, Denise. Hi, Janet. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Stutton Time. Hi, Joe. Um, Angela, Karina, hello to you too. Um, who's on Facebook? So just, just nip back to the beginning. We've got Sandra and Jackie and uh, just Stephanie and Jean and Susan and Susie. Sorry if I miss anybody. You know how quickly these messages come through. Oh, YouTube's busy, isn't it? Uh, Marita's in Germany. Hello. Hi, Jen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sharon, Fiona and Angela and Mandy. Sunny in Devon. It's, it's freezing, but it's glorious here. I'm looking in the garden now and the sun's just streaming. It looks like bikini weather. Uh, morning, Pauline and Jackie and Beverly and Denise. Um, daughter's 10th. Oh, Amanda's daughter's 10th birthday. Happy birthday to your daughter. Hello, Christine in Australia and Rosina's in Blackpool and Stephanie's in Canada. Hello, Chris is in the New Forest. Um, good, thank you, Leslie. Very good at the moment. Uh, cold but sunny in Manchester. It's what it's like here. Um, hi, Brenda in Kentucky. Um, and Shelley, hello to you. Hello, Cheryl. Um, so we, 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 I'm going to make, I'm going to make, in fact, I'm making a lemons bag. That's what we're going to do today. I have made a video, so if you don't like the chat or you, you're, you, you're watching on a repeat, on a repeat, you're watching later when we're not live, maybe you're better off watching the YouTube video. It's this one that I make, it's the rainbow checked one. Um, and it's just a nice little unusual bag. It's not my design, I have to say. I can't remember, can't remember where I got it from. Um, but it's just something that's a little bit different. The one that we're going to make will be this size. Um, this was my experimental one and I ended up chopping some bits off it when it went wrong. So that's a little bit smaller, but you could make it smaller if you wanted to. Hello Jill, hello Lorraine, hello Anne, hello Cara and uh, Bernadette. Bernadette's having fun with the pink parcel this morning. Um, who's your shushing, Debbie Stevens? Cle cleaning this morning? No, it's far too glorious to be cleaning. This is Saturday morning after all. Hi Zell. Um, hello, Barbara. I didn't know there was an Ipswich in Australia. There you go. Um, hello from Le, ooh, from Jubliana. Is that Jubliana? Not heard of that one. The 100 Jana. Where are you? Um, good morning from Pennsylvania, says Cheryl. Sunny in Birmingham, says Andrea. Um, now, I've got a couple of, well, four new fabrics to show you before we start sewing. Oh, I'm having a coffee in a minute, I think. I've had three this morning. Mind you, I have decaf, so that's all right, isn't it? Um, all of the materials that you need, I'll go through with them as we're sewing this morning, but they will be in detail in Metric and Imperial on YouTube. I do need to render that, so it's going to be probably a couple of hours after we've finished here that it's up to actually uploaded. Hi, Linda. Um, Sunny in Chester. Oh, thank you very much, Irene. Oh, Irene. While you're there, um, got your message about the uh, notifications from Half Yard Club. If you're a member of the Half Yard Sewing Club and you've chicked, you've chicked, you've chicked Irene, um, and you've clicked on the enable emails, that's what's going to have your email sent to you every month. If you haven't clicked on that, then you're not going to get them. Irene basically messaged me this morning or last night, can't remember, just saying that she doesn't get any emails and she'd like them um, because you will have a newsletter on the first of the month, just saying what's coming up, what the monthly project is, what the special offer is for that month, what, you know, what kind of discounts you have, and there'll be a link back to the live as well. Um, and then halfway through the month, you get another one just letting you know what the secondary project is and that that's up there as well. So can I show you that before we move on? Now, now I know that you're there. Um, hello, Glenda in France. You were lucky on EHFC. EHFC, what's EHFC? Um, so I can't tell the difference, to be honest, Julie, decaf or calf. So I thought I might as well have the decaf because it must be better for you. OK, let me do this for Irene and anybody else who um, hasn't had your email addresses that, uh, that there okay um that, that doesn't receive regular emails this is what you need to do so this is the half yard sewing club and i'm actually logged in at the moment so there's all of your projects and all videos and that kind of thing if you go to my account and there's all your details and everything go right down to the bottom here 
and it says receive newsletter and half yard sound club emails and then update my details and then you'll receive um, your emails every month i think a lot of people um, when you see something like that automatically think um, oh i'm going to be bombarded with spam uh, it, it's not we don't do that that's purely to enable you to receive our emails every month then newsletters that's all um, it's not advertising or anything like that it's just the half yard club um, regular newsletter and updates but you do need to click that box okay um, while we're there I just wanted to have a look actually who's been who's been making stuff because the um, this month's project is the crumb cushion and when you go on here you can see pictures that other people have uploaded so oh 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 that's nice that was from I made a cushion didn't I it doesn't say whose it is Oh yeah, somebody did, somebody did been crumb quilting and quilting as you go. Can't wait to see that one when it's finished. And what else have we got? Sewing projects. Oh, now then, this one, um, this is one that we brought back. So um, you'll get you'll have your projects for two years. Oh, sorry, I got to sneeze. Um, but by popular request, some of the projects that have been taken off are coming back again you're going to get an extra one a month and that's going to stay for a year so this one is actually one of the most popular um it's, it's quite big you know the, it stands about i don't know about 10 inches high but i want to see what you've been making oh look at this oh i love your choice oh look i love that fabric oh and of course i love that fabric yeah, it's quite quite a big project that one. So um, it's not one of these little diddy um, sewing machine pin cushions. It's it, it actually stands about that big. It's really big. But anyway, that that's that. So Irene, hope that helps. Hello, Lorna in South Africa. Hello, Sue in Norfolk. Um, who is that? Watching with my daughter from the Wendy Wendy West, the Wendy West, the Windy West of Ireland. Oh, congratulations to your daughter. That's it. That's the start of a new career from her. Um, crumb quilting, Lisa, is using tiny little scraps of fabric to create, oh, let me just lift this up, things like this. But I'm not going to go into that in very much detail because there's the video on the main project, which is the cushion, oh, it's not that one, it's the one behind me here, um, on the, can you see that, on the Half Yard Sewing Club, so you'll have all of your instructions and how to crumb quilt and how to, um, Quilt as you go and self binding with hexagons in, in the video. Morning, Lisa. You all right? It's sunny in Tinmouth. Hello, Deborah in Massachusetts. Um, oh, I forgot on Facebook again. It's nice, isn't it, Marina? That pink cushion. Um, don't forget, if you do join, you're going to have 48 projects the first day you join. How's that? Because you get a back catalogue of. Um, of two years worth plus your block of the month anyway i was always going to try crumb quilting it's actually loads of fun it takes longer than i thought it would do but i really enjoyed doing it really does that's the first time i've done anything like that hi brian now let me show you some new fabrics before we start sewing so we've only got four because we did kind of inundate you with fabrics last week, didn't we? Um, this is a chambray. So you've got 100% um, cotton. It looks a little bit like denim, but as you can see, it's really light. But this kind of weight of fabrics is perfect for summer. So I'm imagining... Um, demonstrate how to do the binding on a hexagon, please. Ooh. No, it doesn't have to be cut on the bias, Margaret. The ones on the uh, on the cushion are self-bound. So you basically cut the larger hexagon and fold it over the edges. That's that's a really easy way to bind hexagons. Um, now I'm thinking summer dresses, blouses, lightweight skirts. It's chambray's. Chambray's actually um, two different colours of denim woven together, um, very much like denim. Um, so you have a white and a blue in denim and chambray is the same kind of thing, but it's, it's lightweight and it's a cotton. Um, so that one is the floral. I think it's so pretty and it's a really comfortable to wear. Yes, of course you can quilt with it and make bags with it and all the rest of the things that we do, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking summer clothes, particularly when we've got a lovely day like this. Definitely thinking about making summer clothing. 
Um, then we've got a second chambray, which is a polka dot. So we've had small spots before. Now we've got big ones. So again, another chambray. This is 140 wide as well, so it's quite a nice wide one. It's blue, um, Rosina. It's, it's, it's like a denim blue. Um, on my screen, that's quite accurate. It's not, it's not bright. It, it looks like denim. Um, I'm just done crumb quilting. Lovely. Hello, Sharon in Florida. The sun's just coming up there. Oh, dungarees would be lovely in this, wouldn't it, for summer? Really um, comfortable and, and lightweight. Um, Julie says, would you show me how to use a quarter inch foot? When I do it, it doesn't measure a quarter inch. I haven't actually got one on this sewing machine. Um, can you move the oh, threads come undone? Can you move the needle across on your foot? Because an easy way of doing that is to, to sit the foot on top of a ruler and literally move the needle across till it's at the quarter inch marking. Um, but if you've got a quarter inch foot, it should measure a quarter of an inch. What machine have you got? I don't know every every sewing machine, but um, yeah, I think somebody is answering you. Uh, one side and one, yeah. N normally, one side is a quarter of an inch, one side is an eight of an inch. But um, feet do tend to differ from machine to machine. Um, yes, so it is a wooden skewer, Amanda, on the sewing machine project for the needle. Um, cotton lawn. We haven't got any plain cotton lawns actually no we've got cotton poplins um which are quite light but not not lawn actually oh we've got some lovely lovely printed lawns coming in but it'll be a couple of weeks yet um hello Anne marie hello dominica yes dungaree style dress would be lovely would wouldn't it in those um, then we've got a couple of blenders. We sell an awful lot of planes. We've got plain cottons, plain poplins, and blenders. So blenders are kind of plain, but with a bit of texture. So there's a whole range of, these are just called textured blenders. This is a brand new one, which is, let me call in this fuchsia pink. I can double check and let you know. Um, polka dot pink, no, it's not polka dot pink. Let's go back to the first page. Um, but again, they're 100% cotton, so I'm just looking at... Oh, there we go. Uh, bright fuchsia pink textured blender. It's only £3.50 for half a metre. But it's kind of plain, but not. So if you don't want a very plain fabric, but you just wanted to um, add a little bit of interest to the planes, these kind of things don't normally fight with your fabric. You know, they're not going to argue with it. They tend to sit in the background, but... Um, they, they have a little bit of attention. And this is a brand new one as well. So these have only gone on this morning, and I have noticed we've got quite a few orders. So this is the spot blender. We've got a few spot, spot blenders as well, um, in greys and blacks and pinks and all kinds of colours. Um, but I love that lime green. Again, I'm, I'm thinking summer. I know we're not quite in spring yet, but I'm thinking summer. Karen's had a pink parcel. Megan's making a trivet style placement. Oh, that's a nice idea. She's not watching, is she, your mum? Carol's got a quarter inch, but she says it's amazing. Trying to make my first quilt while watching. Might have to stop before I go wrong. Oh, Shelley. And I, I know what it's like to sew and talk at the same time. Anyway, so let's have a look at this bag. So this is the one that I've made. I'd made it this morning, actually, on YouTube. Um, and it's got quite a big gusset at the side. But the nice thing is, when there's, there is something in that, but when there's nothing in it, you can fold it so it's, it kind of goes flat. So if you need an extra bag, or you're travelling, or you're going on your holes, and you just wanted something to pop some bits and bobs in, you can fit a lot more than you imagine, actually, in there. Um, but it's, it's quite fun to make. Again, it's, it's not my design. I don't know where it came from. Um, so, your fabrics. I'm going to use my lemons because I'm thinking summer, and I think this is really summery. This one is the um, the pastel rainbow tartan. A barbecue pin work for the pin cushion. I don't know what a barbecue pin is, Amanda. What's a barbecue pin? I just used a wooden skewer. Um, just made a batch of chocolatey clairs. Ooh! 
<laughs> I haven't had a chocolate eclair for years. Um, Brother 130. Thanks. Oh, that, thank you. Thank you for answering, um, everybody, because um, I, I miss a lot of your questions anyway. But um, I know a, a dog walked, coffee brewed. <laughs> I just made it in time. Um, yeah, it's lovely when you interact like that. It's um, it's a nice little, it's a nice little Saturday morning sesh, isn't it? Um, Mando is going to show at Crufts tomorrow, but just a deposit. Oh no! Oh, I hope, hope you're going to be okay. Oh, we keep it. I don't know. Um, I was supposed to be going, or we were supposed to be going to um, to the seaside tomorrow. It was both both my son's birthdays last week. Um. Oh, on, on the 8th and eighth and the 10th, one was 27 and one was 41. So 27-year-old we took out for dinner, because um, he lives here. And 41-year-old, who I don't see often enough, we were going to, he lives in Norfolk, we were going to go to somewhere near Hunstanton where you can take the dogs and have lunch and have a walk on the beach and have a jolly nice day. And he phoned up this morning and said he's got neurovirus. So we're not, not going there. Um, and little Vienna, my granddaughter, was going to be coming over as well. Got a really, really bad cold with the fever and the swollen tonsils and everything. So everyone's everyone's a bit ill. Um, has has like shoes. <laughs> Hi, Karen. She says I'm doing my first ever quilt for the Jubilee. Oh, do show, do show. I know you can't do that on um, on YouTube, but if you nip onto Facebook and send me a picture that would be very nice um, anyway that's the pastel rainbow tartan and the lining I've made with the um, the bright pink polka dot the new pink polka dot which is lovely so again measurements exact measurements in centimeters and in inches I'm going to put on the YouTube video which will be uploaded in a couple of hours time oh Elaine's got a birthday gift from Debbie Shaw oh, oh she's seen the parcel I hope it's a big one um, right, so this fabric, 20 inches this way, 10 inches that way. Um, you'll need to cut across the fabric from selvage to selvage because this is the way that it's going to work. That's going to fold around and the zip goes to the front. So um, if you've got a directional fabric, this isn't. But if you do have a di directional fabric, be aware that it's going in the same direction. And when you come to fit the zip, the zip slider goes at the top of the fabric. So we don't we don't want that being upside down because if that opens very slightly anything that's in there's going to fall out um, on the back of this fabric i've put some interfacing this time i've used a valiseline g200 i'm just going to plug my iron in um, i didn't want to use a fusible fleece on this because we're going to put some binding on the inside and it'll be quite thick and oh, wrapped around my chair leg um thanks sarah so let's plug that in there um but i did want to stabilize the fabric so to, just to make it a little bit firmer so it's not really thick and heavy but it's a little bit firmer and with the um the tartan fabric which is a slightly looser weave it stops the fabric from twisting so if you do have a a linen or something like that you want to use and i'd suggest you put just a lightweight interfacing on the back so i put that on the wrong side of the outer fabric and I've also put it on the wrong side of the handle. This measures four inches by 18 inches. Um, right, still trying to read your messages that come in like this today. So, oh, hi, Leslie. My cleaner had COVID a few weeks back and now has long. Oh, no. Oh, gosh, that's awful. Um, right. I've got one lining piece, which is the same size as the outer. I'm just using white cotton. So that's 20 by 10. I've got two pieces of fabric I'm going to use for binding. These are two inches wide. I'll need to measure how long because they're too long. I'll need to chop those down. And I'll need um, a few pieces of fabric to make tabs, tabs to go on the end of the zip because the zip doesn't go straight into the seam. It goes into a piece of fabric here because, again, there's binding on the inside here. I did that out a little bit, but it's full of fluff. But you've got binding on the inside, and if you're binding, I mean that's thick enough. But if you're binding over zips as well, then that can be a little bit, a little bit of a struggle. Um, oh, I wonder. I'm just reading your message, Anne, and it's not for me. I, I, that confused me a little bit. Um, 
a chart explaining the uses for the different stabilizers. Yes, Jacqueline, I think that is a jolly good idea. Um, I mean, with a stabiliser like this, this, this is the kind of stabiliser, so this is 200, H200, um, on the website. I don't know about other brands, I, I only use what we sell, really. Um, but this is the kind of interfacing that you would use on collars and plackets and, and pockets and cuffs and things like that. So it's perfect for dressmaking. Um, the idea when you are interfacing, normally, particularly with dressmaking, is not to have the interfacing heavier than the fabric or stiffer than the fabric. But with something like this, it, it's just making it a little bit firmer. Normally the bag making, I go for something a little bit heavier. Um, right, let's, let's do it. We're going to do the zip first of all. So let me just pop my bits to one side and tidy up. Way, way too long is this zip, but that's what we do. And I'm just going to cut four pieces of fabric to make tabs to go on the end. So that, I don't know, about two... Two inches by three inches, something like that. Way too big, we're going to cut those down. Now because I've got a zip that is too long, um, I'm going to chop off the metal bits on the end. Make sure then that you don't pull the slider off the end of the zip. And the zip is going to go, so if you fold this over, zip's going to go in the gap here. And I want that to be an inch or so, or two and a half centimetres shorter than the length of the fabric on each end. So again, let's chop that down. I'm not measuring and marking, but you can do if you like. Put that to one side, and then these are going to go on the end. Now, because the end of my zip is open, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue right on the end here. And then when I place my fabric over the end of the zip, I can make it meet. And again, the, these scraps are too big. I will cut them down to the size of the zip shortly. And I'm going to sandwich the zip in between two of the pieces of fabric like that. And then sew straight across when I've re-threaded my needle. I don't know how that came undone. It's caught on something. We'll just re-thread that. Janet's made a jubilee bear. How lovely. Oh, Laura, that, that dinosaur fabric is perfect, isn't it, for little boys? Or little girls, actually. My uh, granddaughter Vienna's mad on dinosaurs as well. We went to the um, natural, his has natural history, natural concept, natural history museum for a birthday last year, and um, we took the two girls. In fact, we took all three of them. Um, Finn, my youngest, is uh, too young to realise what's going on at the moment. Um, but they'd got there's one bit where you walk around, and they've got a couple of dinosaurs, and they move. And you can stand quite close to them and they kind of roar a little bit and move a little bit. And I, I, I said to Beatrix, oh, do you know what dinosaurs have for dinner? They like little girls. And she just turned around and says, Grandma, they're not real, you know. Okay. Six-year-olds know best, don't they? Anyway, that's what we do. So just so straight across the edge and then we'll finger press that back. And do the same on this side. Don't need the glue on this one. Is the Bluebell wood bundle likely to be available? Um, yes, Maria. We've had to order more fabric because we sold out of everything so quickly last week. Um, we will be able to put um, maybe only three or four bundles together with all of the fabric. The problem is um, the hedgehogs on cream is out of stock completely and won't be coming back again. So I, when I ordered from Lewis and Irene, I said, I want, I want all of the fabrics all over again. Um, and they came back and said, no, not that one, just can't get that one. Um, so I do have a little bit left that I can put into a few bundles, but not very many. But I was thinking, um, if I can only put together 14 of the 15 fabrics, do you still want 14? Because I can bundle up 14 fabrics. But um, as I said, only two or three of the of the whole 15 piece collection. So if you're interested, let me know 
and um, and we'll put those together. I'll let you know when they're in. Um, Luce and Irene are normally very quick at uh, delivering, so hopefully by Wednesday we should have the fabrics in. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know then, and um, let me know if you want a fourteen, a bunch of fourteen. Um, right. So, so I'm just thinking what I'm doing for a minute. Um, so I've got these little tabs on each end. Don't rush out and buy glue sticks if you don't have any, but I, I do like them just to kind of hold things together. So I'm just um, going to crease that. Just holding those together like that. And then... Maria will have 14, no problem. Okay, we can do that. We can definitely do a bunch of 14. I wonder if I, sh if I should be ordering more. Anyway, we haven't got room. Um, hello, Kate in Dolby in Australia. Oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm carrying on like, um, like I'm not showing you anything. Right, so I'm just trimming down the edge of the tab so it's the same width as the edge of the zip. I'm not going to West Point, Rosine. I don't have time. There's um, there's a, a show on a, at the NEC. Oh, no, Claire, don't use Prit. Um, Prit's meant for paper. These are designed for fabric. So I wouldn't want to put Prit stick on anything that goes in my sewing machine because it might gunk it up. And there may be an element of when the needle goes through the glue that it pushes it into the machine. These are designed for fabric, so don't worry about that. Um, they also dry clear and they wash out. I don't know about Prit. Um, Oh, hello, in, I'm sorry, missed your name. Hello in Cornwall. Who was that? Missed you. No, Anne, we haven't got the sage green canvas at the moment. Still waiting. Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> Sarah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if we've got our warehouse is three floors and we're full up. <laughs> I might take you up on that. Anyway. So remember, the zip pull is going to go to the top. So uh, make sure that your fabric is in the right direction. doesn't really match on this one because it's non-directional. Um, we're going to sew this right sides down. So zip pull facing downwards over the end and sew that it's in the centre. So in other words, um, equidistant from each side, like so. And I'm going to use my glue stick again. You could use a quilter's tape, you could pin, you could just go for it without anything at all. Let's just line that up to the edge there. I'm going to sew this open because I think it's going to be easier to start with. And just arrange that so that it's in the centre. Just squish that down. Then I'm going to, Christine, making a bag. Whoops. Making one of these. Little, little bag like that. That's what we're doing. Do you know what it reminds me of? Have you ever made microwave popcorn? They come in bags like that, don't they? Anyway. Oh, no, we're going to do that one. Um, so I'm going to move my needle over to the left-hand side so I don't have to put the zipper foot on. So if you have a computerized sewing machine, normally if you... Um, Use the stitch width on a straight stitch. Straight stitch doesn't have a stitch width. It'll swing the needle from one side to the other. And that means I can get quite close to the teeth of the zip, but without, um, without the foot actually going over the top. I'm just sewing straight down. When I get to the edge here, needle down, that's where the slider is. So grab hold of the pull, move it out of the way, and carry on sewing. I know I've got a strange thing going on with my sewing machine again, my microphone. Because um, you can't, it's weird. Um, new mic, not picking up the sewing machine, sounds a bit odd. But I, when I was, um, I was trying to adjust the settings before we came here today, and I took the mic, put it right next to the machine and ran it, didn't pick it up at all. Don't know what's going on. So I put my old mic back on again, and it's doing the same thing. Strange things going on with microphones. Um, Morning from Michigan in the USA, says Jane. Hello. Rosina's going to the show on Friday. 
Okay, so that's the zip on one end of the fabric. Then I'm going to put the second half of the zip on the opposite end of the fabric. So again, have a little bit of glue. Weird, isn't it, Stephanie? No idea. I'm going to have a play with it when I've finished here. So it must be something in the settings, but I don't know what. Never heard of that before. Because my machine is actually quite noisy. And let's fold this over so that the edges meet. And again, just line up the edges of the zip to the edge of the fabric. We'll trim these bits off in a bit. So this time I'm going to close the zip, do that. And sew down the middle of the zip tape again. Hello, Gail in Ireland. Um, did first zip, but forgot about the glue pen. So, I mean, the current glue pens are only quite a recent thing, but um, so it's, it's not necessary that you have to use a glue pen, but it does make life easier. Pins in a stick, ball it. All right, move this out the way. I don't know, Laura. I haven't changed any settings. That's the thing. Strange. But um, I should look into it. Okay. That. And now I can trim off the ends of the tab so that it's all the same width as the bag. And then we'll put on the lining. Hello, Mandarin Sterling. Weird, isn't it, Debbie? Weird. Don't know what to do. So let's open the zip for this side. So the lining's going to go on the opposite side of the zip. So we'll have a bit of glue down here. Like so. And pop on the lining. Go. Oh, I, I tell you, I should have asked you weeks ago and I keep forgetting. Um, actually, zip close for this one. Do any of you use QR codes? Um, the team at um, Half Yard Sewing Club were asking ages ago if I'd ask you. Um, because we just there's no way that we can monitor how many people actually use them. So, for instance, when you're saving any of the projects that are coming down, do you use the QR code or do you put the code onto the website? Are QR codes something that you would use if you um, if you're reading a book? I know a couple of my books have got QR codes in them that go through the videos of projects, um, like my um, mm, bags and purses. I think has QR codes in it. But is that something that you use? And if you do, do you use it on your phone or do you use it on a tablet? So just be interested to know because um, there, are, there are a lot of work to do and we just want to know that you're actually using them, if that's okay. Well, thanks, Jane. What, Marie? She says, guess what, what? Can't guess, what, what am I doing? Um, let me change the bobbin. No, it's, it's, it's my mic, niece, it's, it's my mic. Right, so this is, I'm just sewing down the opposite side here. So I've got the lining on one side of the zip and the, okay, um, and the outer on the other side. So let's just get inside here and manoeuvre that slider out of the way. And then carry on. Bernadette doesn't. And uses them on a tablet. Don't know how to use them properly, says Janet. Trisha doesn't. Not successful enough to save projects. Use my MacBook Air. Okay. Grace, yes, she does. Shelley does. Thank you. That's that's really you do, Janet does. Jenny does. That's really helpful. Thank you. Amanda does. Angie does. Beverly does. I shall pass this on. Uh, Megan does on both. Thanks, Amanda. Olivan doesn't use them. Thank you. I'll go back through these. Um, can you talk? I'm so near the machine. Can you, Irene? 
Mm. So I'll, I shall have a play with it. Hello, Lisa in, in Pennsylvania. I shall have a play with it when, uh, when, when we're done here. No idea what's going on. Anyway, at least you can hear me talking. It'd be bad if it was the other way around and you could only hear the machine and not me. Mind you, that might not be a bad thing sometimes. Um, yeah, Andrea, we're in the... Don't understand QR codes die. Um, hello, Pamela, we're in Australia. We've got a, got a few of you in Australia today. Um, Teresa's in Pennsylvania. Mary does both. Right, I'll, I'll, read, I'll go back through those later on. Thank you very much. So, that's the outer fabric on one side of the zip. So the second part of the lining needs to go onto the opposite side of the zip. So both sides of the zip will be encased in fabric. So let's do this. So when you're watching like now, or if you're watching any of the videos from Half Yard Club, do you watch them on, on your phone? Can you see things on your phone? Or do you watch on a tablet? Or do any of you actually sit at a PC? Or you've got laptops, just just out of interest. I do most of my work on on a PC. I've got um, I've got quite a, a bank of PCs. I've got two here, um, with with monitors all over the place. But I, I suppose that's where I work from, so that's why I do that. But if I'm watching videos or anything, then I I watch them on my. It depends where I am. If I'm out and about or I'm sitting around waiting or something, then it'll be on my phone. iPad, laptop, tablet, phone. iPad, iPad, tablet, laptop. <laughs> I could make a ditty, couldn't I? Um, Lorena's had a PC. Lois on a tablet, laptop, lap, laptop, laptop, iPhone, tablet. Um, Tina and Elf on a tablet. Eileen, the bigger picture. Hello, Jackie in West Virginia. Oh, a snowstorm. Gosh. Hope you're all right. Hope you're inside next to a, a cosy fire with a mug of soup and not, not stranded or snowed in. PC, iPad, iPhone, all of them, says Chris. Move the slider out of the way. John, how can you, how can you copy it? Um, I think somebody said earlier on, Janice, if you give me the QR code, if you just hover, you haven't got one here. The QR code on anything. If you hover your um, camera over the code, a little box will come up and that, it'll take you to a link um, to the video. Must have something with a QR code on it. They're all over the place these days, aren't they? Maybe not. Does that go on? No. No. Anyway. So I've got that. I'm going to turn it now so that the outer fabric is on the outside. All right, that. so let's just turn it through. Sarah's on a laptop. Linda's on an iPad. Um, if I cut two inch strips for binding, will that work instead of two and a half inch? I'm using two inch strips for this one, Laurie. Did I say two and a half? I'm using two. I'm going to top stitch around the edge. So first, I'm just going to iron that. PC, phone, tablet and TV. Sue's all over the place. You and your social media. Just wait for that to heat up. A video on how to use QR codes. That's a good idea. Karen, thank you. Right. So if I, if I had something with a QR code on, I could do it from here, couldn't I? Anyway. So I'm just going to press the fabric away from the zip. Quite warm enough and on the inside as well so just make sure that the lining is pulled away from the zip and then we're just going to sew all the way around the edge um lives on youtube on tv facebook and phone for comments there we go now you'll find this easier um to sew with the zip open 
because of course we only want to sew through the top layer not all the way through so we're going to have to maneuver this around a little bit so i don't know if you'll be able to see properly under here but i'm going to sew across the top first and then when i spin it around i'm just going to make sure that all of the fabric underneath here is kept out of the way so it'll get a little bit creased up but as long as the the journey that my needle is going on isn't sewing through anything, any other layers of fabric underneath there, then we'll be fine. So I'm just moving all the rest of that fabric out of the way. Showing us that you can't really see too much there, can you? Um, oh, if the QR code's on your tablet, how do you copy it to save it? Um... You saved the video. Has anybody else ever done that? The actual, it, no, it's not the actual video, is it? You save the code so that you don't have to um, use a lot of storage on your um, on your tablet. So you save the code. Otherwise, you can copy the link because we don't just give you the QR codes. We give you the link as well, so you can just copy that and save it. It is beautiful fabric, jewels. It's it just it is like holidays, isn't it? Sunny and fresh and bright and lemons. We got a little lemon tree. Right, that's that. So that's how my bag's going to look. Now let's make up the handle. So if you've seen me make a bag before, you've probably seen me do this a hundred times. So I'm going to take the fabric, and again, I put interfacing on the wrong side of this, and fold it in half to crease the center. Use a bit of best press if your fabric doesn't crease very well, so just to keep it under control. I'm making Mary Bennett in a little bag like that. Is what we're doing, so something that's just a little bit different, I think. Um, Linda's making a field for an archery tournament tomorrow. If I had said the QR code and go back to it in three years' time, where does it save to? Mary, I need to check on that. I don't know where it's saved to, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure somebody can answer you there. Um, uh, unless you just print off the code, that might be what you do. Should know that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Thing is, I've never had to do it because I've still got all the projects on my PC. I should check with the girls if nobody's. If, has anybody done that? Has anybody saved any of the projects using the QR code? Come and let us know. Oh, Claire, a summer drink and lemons. <laughs> never get any work done when it's sunny, though. But isn't it weird? The other day, I mean. It was only three or four days ago I was chipping ice off the car in the morning and then like two days later walking the dog with no coat on. Weird. Let's see, the QR code will be on the projects that are coming down. Um, so you'll, you'll be notified of those. Those will be on the, um, on the newsletter that comes out every month. Um, and when you click on the project, it'll be on the right-hand side. Okay. Thank you, Sally. So normally it'll save in downloads or you could save it in photos if you screenshot it. That's a good idea. Thank you. So I'm just going to sew down each side of this now. So on the, the little one that I made, or the other one that I made, um, I use the lining fabric for the handle, so it's a bit of a contrast. And it picks up on the colour of the zip as well. Oh, we do have the zip um, back in stock again. You know, the... Um, 13 different coloured zips, that's what the packs that these came from. Um, we've got those back in stock, that's taken ages to get them back, but we do have those. So if you want to stock up on, um, on lots of different coloured zips, there's 13 different colours of, I think it's, I need to check on it, I think it says 18 inch zips, but I'm sure they're 20 this time around, I think they came in quite big. Screenshot the page, thank you Jacqueline. Save the video to your favourites tabs on the internet browser, says Beverly. Hello, Irene. Right, now we're going to roll this so that the edge of the zip 
is three inches away from the edge of the fabric. That doesn't have to be set in stone. That's just what I chose to do for here. Just going to trim this back a little bit. It um, seems to have grown somehow. These things happen. So let's just cut this back. I don't want my lining sticking out the bottom like a petticoat, do I? There we go. And yeah, top's, top's fine. Top might need trimming again. It seems to have twisted a little bit. I'm going to trim that down. I was going to say I love the sound of scissors crunching, but you probably can't hear that, can you? Right. Won't make any difference to the bag. Just want to make sure. Yes, better. Okay, so this is um, the edge of here. About three inches, or that's seven and a half centimetres from the edge. Um, I think the, the, the idea, when you open the zip, you've got the, you've got the bag flap. Oh, I'd, I'd lay it down like that. So things don't fall out. And remember, as I said earlier, that the zip pull is going to be at the top, not at the bottom. So you only open it as much as you need it to. I'm going to measure one and a half inches from there, so that's halfway. And put a little mark here. And one and a half inches from here. Little mark. And then the strap is going to go just through the top fabric, so not through both pieces, right over the top of that, facing downwards. And I'll pop a clip in there. And then move this over to the other side, just making sure that that's not twisted. And pop that on the opposite side here. Oh, that would be better. No, just no, no, just coffee. Don't ask them. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Got the kettle on. Right, let's square that up. Um, Stephanie's in on butter. How lovely. Lace on our petticoats sticking out the bottom of our skirts. Oh, when was that, Sue? When did we do that? Was that the eighties or was that the seventies? I remember doing that. Or just adding a bit of lace to the bottom of your skirt. Like, we had tiered maxi skirts. I had a pink checked one that my mother made me. <gasps> anyway, make that there. So, I'm just going to sew across the top, just through that one layer. So, not, not all the way through to the back. So, I'll find that easy to do from the inside, actually. So, that's just going to hold the handles in place while we start to put together the bag. Can't see that, can you? That's what we've got. Then we're going to turn it inside out again and we're going to open the zip. <laughs> there are, they should stop asking really, shouldn't they? Because um, it gets this big long list and then just can't deliver. Right, so let's refold this. Now, obviously, I can't see where the markings were now because I've turned it inside out. So I just want to make sure that the strap is the same distance from the edge on both sides. So just manoeuvre that around. And you can measure that if you like, because you can feel where that is. So just to the edge there, it's just over an inch, just over an inch. So that's nice and central. Right. Then we're going to fold this. So where the edge of the strap is, I'm just going to fold up to the edge there and clip it. Gypsy skirts, that was it. And then let's fold this all the way down. Make sure the strap is out of the way and that this is even. So you've got the same distance all the way down. So you can measure that as well if you wanted to. Oh, the zip shouldn't have sold out already. I'll, I'll double check on that, Deirdre. We should, I'm sure we've got enough zips. There are loads of them. So let's do the same here. So there's the edge of my handle. Let's fold that over. Pop in a clip. Can you imagine, Sarah? That actually being his element. And just make sure that that's uniform all the way down there as well. To be honest, it doesn't make that much difference if it's not exact, you know, to the millimetre. 
Yeah, Sarah is, oh, sorry, who is that? Um, oh, that's gone. Somebody else said about, um, if you can see your petticoat, Charlie's dead or something. I don't, I've not heard of that one before. When you open your shop and have a coffee shop. We should, we should do, should, this shop is going to be amazing. <laughs> if we ever get to open this shop, it'll be in two years' time. And it will be amazing. Um, Kaz, the sewing machine mat is um, similar to the hexagon cushion there, but smaller hexagons. And the instructions are um, Half Yard Sewing Club projects. So you need to be a Half Yard Sewing Club member to access the, uh, the details. Fredstead. Fredstead, is it? Oh, I don't know. Does anybody know where that came from? I've not heard of that one. Um, my ex-husband used to tell women in gypsy skirts that their underskirt was showing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether that's funny or not. Right, we're just going to go straight across the bottom. So this can be quite thick. So I've got, I do have a tip for you actually. Put that out of the way. This raw edge is going to be covered over by binding, so don't worry about that looking a little bit messy. Um, now, if you find that this is very thick for your fabric, you know you've got a little black button on the side of your foot here on the standard foot. Um, what that does, if I lift that up and press it in, it locks the foot flat, which means that when you're coming up to a thicker layer of fabric, maybe it's... Um, uh, a, a seam in a pair of jeans that, that can be something like nine nine layers of fabric thick so when you're coming up to a thick piece of fabric say that's a thick piece of fabric normally your sewing machine foot will be at this kind of angle trying to get up and over the top of it which is where it can struggle so when you're right on the edge of your fabric you could turn your hand wheel towards you if you don't have a black button um, if you've got a black button I'm going to show you how to use that otherwise if you have um, maybe a piece of folded fabric obviously this is this is my fist, not fabric, and butt that up to the edge so that when your foot starts sewing, it's flat when it starts to sew. You can buy tools to do that, but you can easily do it with a piece of folded card or something like that. Um, but if you do this with the black button on your sewing machine, start with your foot up, press in said button, get that clip out, and then pop your foot down, and that's leveled. Oops. That's flat now. So the, the back of the foot, the heel there, isn't actually touching the bottom here. It, it's, it's sitting flat. So it's not going to have that problem where it's trying to get up a lump of fabric. It's starting flat. So that's going to be a lot easier to carry on sewing flat. As soon as you start sewing, it kind of disengages. So it's not, it's not stuck in that position. But if you weren't aware, that's what the little black button's for. And it really does help. Um, yep, yeah, Christian, piece of folded cardboard works just as well. That's fine. Okay, we're going to put some binding on this now. So that's how we're looking. Just want to make... Oh, I thought to put the handle on upside down for a minute. Um, so I've got my two inch wide strips of fabric and they need to be about an inch longer than the width of the bag thereabouts you can also put that shorter later so those now measure nine inches and again i'm going to press those i am going to put a little bit of best press on these um and then iron it in historical it's in a star, ladies wore their petticoats longer to show that the king charles was dead Oh, I didn't know that. So Charlie's dead is what people said to warn you, that your petticoat was showing. Oh, didn't know that. How interesting. Right. Karen's got a black button. Yeah, if you've ever wondered what it's for, that's, that's that. Um, nothing in the manual, says Joe. That's the thing. Some of these manuals can be very comprehensive, but um, some things they, they miss. So... Long edges to to meet, and and this doesn't have to be cut on the bias because we're not going around a curve. So it's just a two-inch wide strip of fabric. 
The Iron Jackie is a prim mini iron. We've got these on the, on the website, debbieshawsewing.com. Right, and then long pieces to the centre. So just like we did with the with the handle. That one to the centre. And then in half again. Thank you, Claire. Um, Sorry, right, Rosie. There's, uh, it doesn't matter if you're late. You can always watch these videos back. They're always there on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, and with most of the videos, I, well, I try to do a dedicated tutorial without the chat because not everybody likes it. Um, so the tutorial for this one will actually be the, um, the rainbow tartan bag. Um, that's what I made this morning. So that's going to be going on later on this afternoon. Right. Charlie's day came from Flitters, if you want to find Charles. Flash the hems of petticoats to show how much they admired him. Hmm. Okay. Now let's put this across the end. Now if your seam allowance is too thick at this point, or if things have gone, you know, they move sometimes, my linings seem to grow, you can trim those back again. And I'm going to... Just pop that over the edge, fold that over, and then fold it back down again. And pop a clip on there. Monday, I'm going to put all of the measurements in the description box on the YouTube video that's going to follow um, this afternoon. I just need to render the video and upload it, which normally takes a couple of hours. Um, and the measurements will all be in the description box on... Um, at metric and an imperial. I need to cut that down a little bit more. And again, just fold the end over to make it neat. You know, to be honest, this is on the inside of your bag. So does it really have to be too neat? There you go. Um, if you're selling it, if you're giving it away, it's very nice to have um, neatness. But if it's for yourself, who's ever going to look inside your bag um, but it is it's kind of good form isn't it to finish it off nicely and another little tip which I show with you on the video if you use the same fabric as your lining uh, particularly if it's a pattern fabric that can be very forgiving in the wobbly stitch department snowing in Georgia says Linda <clears> Okay, <throat> oh. so I'm going to do the black dot thing again right put down that dot thing, put down, and away we go. So because I've wrapped it over the edge, I'm sewing through both layers at the same time. And I mean, you could sew by hand if you wanted this to be perfect and invisible. But like I said, who really is going to go looking inside your bag? You'd have to turn it inside out to see that, wouldn't you? So again, that's sewn through both sides. And the same across the bottom. So again, thick your fabric, fold the end over to make it neat, and then fold it down again. So you've got a nice little box corner there. And clip it. Clips are going to be a lot easier than pins to use on fabric that's now this thick. And a clip. And another one. And again, I can trim off that edge a little bit. So it's about half an inch, well, just over a centimetre. And fold the end over. And clip it. And again, we'll sew straight across there. Beautiful in Western Supermare. Oh, thank you, Sarah. How's Peter, by the way? How are you doing? And you go. Needles come unthreaded. Um, has Lisa had a good idea? No. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Not everybody's a fan of the chat, but there again. Don't have to watch. Um, right, just wrap that around there. 
but so I do try. It, it just takes so long to film all these videos, but um, I do, I do try for most of them. All right, let's try again. Here we go. And we're almost finished. But it's got a good timing, wasn't it? About an hour. It's seven a.m. in Canada, says Peggy Sue. Good day to work on a sewing room makeover. How lovely. really windy it's not it's not too bad here it's very sunny and very cold so we're done might need just a quick iron let's turn it the right side out so push out the corners like so pull the strap to help pull out those corners actually because they those go right into the corner and turn this through Okay, Sarah, we're, we're thinking of you. Thanks for letting me know. Keep me informed. 10 p.m. in Australia, says Dorothy. Why does this very come undone? Oh, Lynette, I think, my, I think the sewing machines actually have a mind of their own and every now and again just say, not sewing. Thread, get out of here. Not having any of it. <laughs> I'm just going to give that a press. There we go, like that. Oh, that's a lovely idea for dance shoes, Karen. Um, because of course, I'm just going to switch my iron off. Um, you can make it longer or narrower for that matter. Tell you what the, the, the best thing to do um, if you're experimenting with uh, different sizes of anything is to cut it all out in paper and sellotape it together and make a paper bag and then just see what it's like. So if you wanted to make that longer, I mean, my fabric was 10 inches um, deep by 20 inches. You could add another four or five inches on the bottom there and still make exactly the same kind of bag. So you could have an adult shoe bag as well. And because it's got the gusset in the side, you've got plenty of room. You could easily get ballet shoes in there. Um, and just the same, I wouldn't make it too much wider to be honest, because then your straps are going to be further apart and it'll do that in the middle. But maybe you're okay with it doing that. But you could certainly make it longer. But it's quite a nice little project, isn't it? That? Um, a longer strap is a good idea, Sarah, as well. Yes, you could put a slider on it too. So you could have a crossbody bag. This one's nice and, well, nice and neat under your arm. So you can get it over your arm with an 18-inch strap. But if you wanted a crossbody, then maybe 35 inches would be a good length to go for. Um, Sue's going to make one for a granddaughter to put a bits in. Um, just turned in, tuned in, sorry, who was that in South Carolina? Um, Rose, hi, expecting cold temperatures and high winds. Ooh. What is the middle project for the middle of the month, please? We're making the Union Jack bunting. Oh, okay, uh, Gina. It's the dollhouse. That's going to be out... Um, Tuesday the 15th isn't it so yes it's your dollhouse um, and then next month I can't remember I can't remember what next month's project is um hello Joella oh that's have I missed I'm glad you like it. it it's quite sweet isn't it and it's nice to make something a little bit different that's easy to make as well um, but that's the whole idea with Saturday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. Simple projects that you can make in around about an hour is, uh, is what we're doing. Um, oh, I'm glad you like it. Thank you, Ellen. Yes, Jane, I should see you on Wednesday. Don't know what we're doing. I shall have a think about something this afternoon. No, I'm not out on the beach with the family tomorrow. Um, I shall come up with something and maybe do a video for that. Anything for a boy. Um, I shall have a think, Mari. Craft, a craft bag? It's the craft bag. Yes, thank you, Sarah. What have I done with that? It's this one, isn't it? This is next month's. <laughs> so this is what I do the one there. Yeah, it's the one behind me. So that one's cows and this one's bikes. And this is the one that's going to have the video with it. So the thing is, I'm getting so far ahead with these projects that I um, can't remember what I'm doing one day to the next so that's that that's yes thank you 
know more than I do these days. Um, thank you, Helen. Bernadette's off to London on Wednesday, so I'll see you next Saturday. Have a lovely day in London. That's okay, Jean. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Claire. I shall see you soon. Kate just joined. Well, we'll just go in now. But remember, you can watch these back again. And, and again, I will be doing the, the demo for the rainbow, um, pastel rainbow check on on YouTube in a bit. I shall get on with that now. See you Saturday. I'll oh, see you Wednesday. Sorry, Marilyn. Glad you enjoyed the day. Um, thank you, Sarah. See you soon. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Um, so do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hope you're all. Hope you're all well. I hope you're fine. So go get on with some sewing. It's um, there's uh, no housework before one o'clock. Remember. So enjoy the rest of the hour before um, before you get the Hoover out. Um, something like a doll has a sewing machine cover. Don't I was thinking about that. A few people have said about making it into a sewing machine cover. I shall have a think about it. Oh, and kits for the dollhouse. Um, we are out of stock at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm draining the warehouses of fabric, so I'm waiting for more fabric to come in. So hopefully next week we're going to be able to get some more kits in for you. Um, right, I'm off then. I shall see you on Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and thank you for joining me today. I'll look for more zips, Laura. I'll have a look. I'm sure we've got some.